If you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this. People, what's the creepiest thing that's ever happened in your house? Shadow people, entities, demons, etc. I lived in a place where, from my bed, I could see through the dining room and into my son's room. I have a hard time sleeping and have heard some noise. I looked out, and my son was crouched on a dining chair. He was two at the time. I asked him why he was up. He reached out his arms and was opening and closing his fists as kids often do when they want picked up. He whispered mama. I got up to get him, and when I reached the chair, he was just gone. I checked on the kids. They were fast asleep. There were a lot of things that happened in that place. I ended up breaking my lease and moving. When I was a kid, I had no curtains or blinds over my window in my room. There's a street lamp just outside my window, so anything that walks past my window, like a deer, would cast a shadow onto the wall opposite my window. Two nights in a row, I woke up to see the shadow of a man on my wall. I didn't have enough courage to turn and look up at the window to see who it was. It was late at night too, and I knew it couldn't be my dad because I could hear him snoring. The worst part is that my bed was in front of the window with my head at the bottom of the window, so whoever was behind me could probably see me. I think this is the scariest thing to ever happen in my house because it's not something supernatural. There's a good chance it was actually a person creeping into some little girl's bedroom window. One evening, as I'm in my room, I hear our front door open. Now, my room is extended past the front of the house, so I'm always the first one to hear someone coming through. We also had those double doors that were heavy, so it was loud regardless. My room is also next to the stairs, so I can see people going up. Back to the story, I hear the door open, and I quickly glance to see someone walking upstairs. After a few seconds, I hear my little siblings start yelling, yay, daddy's home. And they rush upstairs to follow him. My mom quickly follows. A few minutes pass by, and they all run downstairs. My youngest brother is in tears, and everyone else is in a panic. Apparently there was no one, even though they all swore they saw somebody go upstairs. A lot of strange things happened to us after that. I was babysitting a kid who had a video monitor and was told that she wouldn't wake up while the parents were out and that if she did, she should call them right away. I was watching TV with the monitor set off to the side to keep an eye on her, and right around 11, the camera's view shifted a few inches. It then began to slightly jiggle, like someone was messing with it. I was squinting at it trying to decide what I was actually seeing, and I kid you not, the whole screen burst to static for a few seconds, and the kid started wailing. She stood up and was screaming in her crib, just like one of the kids from The Sims. When she didn't fall back asleep after a few minutes, I called mom, and she said, okay, we were on our way home anyway. We think she has nightmares, sometimes it's fine. Never again. So at night, around the same time, about 3 to 4 a.m. I can hear a little girl running through the house and laughing. My house is old, and my father has heard it too. On occasion, we have both woken up to a dark silhouette of a man staring in through the windows. He's extremely tall and looks like he wears a long coat and top hat. Just last night, I heard a rhythmic knock on my bedroom door, and then, when I got out of bed to see what was going on, I heard a giggle and footsteps running away from my door. It's getting to the point where I'm terrified to be in the house at night. No one has ever been harmed by these spirits, and I feel like someone is reaching out for help, but I'm scared to be in the house. I live in a small, two-bedroom house. It's cozy, but comfortable. I've lived here for about two years. Things started off harmless enough. Random things seemed to be moving. Nothing that would immediately draw fear. My girlfriend said that she felt like she had eyes on her when I was at work and claimed that she was constantly seeing something moving towards the back of the house. My girlfriend left to take care of her dad, and I was the one who had to endure the house. I started experiencing weird things. To me, things were getting increasingly weird when I closed the door that leads from the living room to the kitchen. Anytime it was closed, something from the other side would try to open it. I thought this was just airflow until I started noticing that the knob was twisting. It was the equivalent of a toddler trying to open the door. But it would try in increments of three. Two light pulls, then one hard yank. That's when I figured I was dealing with a haunting. There was officially no more doubt. Next came issues while I was asleep. I would wake up about 10 minutes to 3 in the morning, and I would get the impression that somebody was standing behind the door of the kitchen. I would freeze from being so scared. One night, while I was asleep, I actually heard footsteps running towards me, and when I woke up, the door to the kitchen was wide open. This would be the first time that the door was actually successfully opened. I also have a small desk statue of the sirens from Greek mythology. While home one night, 
I heard a thud in the back room and found that the statue had been decapitated. The base of the figure was still on my desk, but the heads were on the ground. Also, while in that same room, I was checking something on my computer, and something behind me slammed into the wall. It sounded like somebody had taken their palm and just hit it really hard. I was almost numb to it by then. The last encounter I had, maybe five days ago, was when I got called to work at about 330 in the morning. I was pulling out of my driveway when I saw something walking by the window. When I did a double take, I saw what looked like a shadowy figure staring back at me. I get the chills even saying it out. Alright, so a few nights ago, I went to bed. I woke up sweaty and hot and picked up my phone. It was around 12 colon 34 ish. I can hear the chatter of a large dog walking towards my room. It stops, and I hear breathing. I turn on my phone flashlight and point it to the end of my bed. A big, fully white, and skinny dog was standing at the foot of my bed, watching me. Out of shock, I cover my head with the blankets and try to sleep. While I'm trying to sleep, I can still hear it breathing. This keeps happening every single night, but I don't know what to do. I don't even want to go to bed anymore. Do ghost dogs exist? Could it be a hallucination? Cryptid? WTF? I purchased an Ouija board thinking it was a bullcrap, had some friends over, and we popped it out. Three of us with our hands on it were asking questions, but nothing happened. We leave the slider on the board and leave the room. Come back, and the slider has slid off the board onto the floor. Needless to say, we were pretty freaked out. Ever since then, my house has come to life. I've seen dark masses peeking around corners multiple times. I look, and it goes away, and then it appears when I look away. My parents and brother have also said they have seen and heard weird things since then. Their name is called when no one calls it. My brother claimed his phone charger slid across the floor. I had a different friend over a few weeks ago, and he woke up in the middle of the night and saw a tall, dark figure standing in the doorway watching him sleep. I asked everyone in the house, and it wasn't them. And last night was the tipping point. I woke up at around 315 and saw a dark figure at the end of my bed. No face or distinct features, just a very big, very dark room, darker than the darkness, as there was no light in my room, and it disappeared, and I felt so cold. I managed to go back to sleep and woke up throwing up this morning. I don't know what I brought into my house, but let this be a warning. Ouija boards are not to be fiddled with. When my parents dug the foundation of the house that I grew up in, they came upon a native burial ground. Upon finding this, they reburied the remains and called a native priest to come and bless the land. They ended up moving the foundation over about 50 feet to build their house. When I was a child and a teenager, I would always hear my name being called by what sounded like family members, but nobody was home. There were a multitude of years that this went on, and I would seek help and understanding for what was going on. Nothing ever came of my search for answers, it was always put off as an imagination. Here is where things start getting weird. I remember one night in particular, and it still gives me extreme emotions thinking about it today, 12 plus years later. I was sitting in the basement playing games, home alone, as was par with all of my paranormal experiences. All of a sudden, crisp as day, I hear a little girl singing a song in what sounds like an ancient language. Nothing I have ever heard before or ever again I sit there frozen, just listening to her, until this great amount of fear takes over my body. I bolt up from my chair and go to walk to the stairs, and that is when it happens. It was like walking into a freezer. I am completely frozen at this point, and I'm sure you could smell the terror in me. I was stuck there in this spot for what seemed like forever, when it just went away. Later that night, I had a dream about a little girl in a white dress who was singing a song. The same girl that I had heard while playing games in my basement this memory has stuck with me, clear as day for the better part of the last 12 years, always in the back of my mind. When I told people at the time what had happened, it was brushed off as a mental illness of some sort, but I know that was not the case. Years later, I came to find out that the burial ground that is next to my house was a burial ground for kids. Yikes. I know that my parents did all they could to put those spirits back to rest when they inevitably accidentally dug them up. I think about the girl from time to time and wonder what her story is. About a year ago, I was in a very dark place, both spiritually and emotionally. I rarely prayed, I had so many insecurities, worries, and problems in my life that it was a struggle to get by day by day. It was at this period in my life that I started to wake up to black demonic figures in my room almost every night. I can't remember when it started but I remember the worst nights to this day. Usually they show up either beside or at the end of my bed. Tall, sinister, and blacker than black. I never had sleep paralysis, and there was never anything in my room that could look like these things, yet I still saw them. 
It got so bad that I had to sleep with a flashlight next to my bed because the only way to get rid of them was to quickly shine my torch at them when I woke up. Usually I wake up to one in my room, which would freak me out on its own, but one night I woke up and saw three of them all surrounding my bed, all the same height and all facing straight towards me, not moving or talking, just watching. That terrified me. Now, all this can be explained rationally, right? Overactive imagination or just being half asleep, right? Well, I have two reasons why I think these things are very real. I woke up one night to see a smaller one, like a child, at the end of my bed. For some reason, I wasn't scared, I think it was because I was still waking up. I have never spoken to these things before, but on that night I did. I just said, I can see you, while looking towards it, and the creepiest thing happened. It started moving towards my desk and literally stood behind my desk as if it were trying to hide. Ducking crazy, if you ask me. My other reason is that earlier this year, some missionaries came to our place for dinner, and I asked them to bless the house and our family. After that, I never saw one in my room again. Call it coincidence, I don't think it is. I think those things were very real. I don't tell anyone in my family because I think they would be creeped out, to say the least, and I don't want to scare them. My grandma's house has had weird goings on since before I was born. Mysterious ringing phones in the basement, TVs and VCRs with minds of their own, bassinets that rocked by themselves. Anyway, it seems one of them may be a mimic. My grandfather had a job that would take him out of town at times. On at least two separate occasions while he was gone, my grandma and uncle saw him walk down a hallway and out of sight. They thought maybe he had come home without them noticing, but his car wasn't in the driveway either time, and he came home later and insisted he hadn't been home. My mother also claimed she used to talk to her deceased grandmother at night sometimes. It scared her because she knew that logically, it wasn't right, but it was her grandmother, so she felt safer about it. Knowing about mimics now, it probably wasn't her grandmother. And now my personal experience. My sister and I used to spend weekends at my grandmother's house when we were younger, through high school, even. We all slept in her bed, and my grandma would make us bacon and hot cocoa for breakfast in the mornings. I woke up one morning, but I was still in a state of half-awareness. I opened my eyes and saw my grandmother leaning in her bedroom doorway, looking at me. I figured she had just come up to see if I was awake yet. But then she leaned backwards out of the doorway and out of sight. Something about the way she moved just wasn't quite right. And that's when I realized I smelled and heard bacon cooking downstairs. It struck me as odd that she would walk away from bacon while it was on the stove. She was in her 70s at this time, and though she got around well for her age, taking the stairs was still a bit of a task and took some time. It didn't make sense that she would risk burning food on the stove just to come upstairs and look at me. She could have just yelled up at me to see if I was up. I called out to ask her if she was upstairs. From where I was, I could see out the bedroom door and down the stairs. She walked from the kitchen to the bottom of the stairs and said, no, she was making bacon. I freaked a little. I got out of bed and booked it downstairs. My sister was already awake and downstairs with my grandma, which is why she was already making bacon before I was up. Both of them said she had not been upstairs, so I told them what happened. That's when my grandma told us the stories I told above about seeing my grandpa when he couldn't have been there. So yeah, I've been a little scared of my grandma's house ever since. I live in a fairly rural area. My house sits a good distance from a main road, and behind it is about 100 acres. The nearest neighbor is hundreds of yards away. So basically, pretty peaceful and quiet. I've hunted and fished my whole life, alone since I was 12. So over the last 12 years, I've seen and heard pretty much all my state has to offer as far as wildlife goes. Also behind my house are a few cattle. All the land is fenced, and there is an old barn, literally 100 years old, which sits at the opening of a hollow with a stream running out. The fence line is at the top of the small ridge line, so one side is pretty steep and rocky, the cows can't get up it. That being said, I was outside, at the edge of the dark, feeding my chickens, and my great Pyrenees went off and ran to the edge of the yard, facing that barn, growling and barking. I walk over with my GSD, who is stuck to my side growling, and I hush them both and listen, assuming to hear coyotes yipping or deer trotting through the woods. But no, I hear what sounds like a cow mooing or baying. Like when you take a calf away or something is wrong. They aren't due to drop calves until next month, but this isn't right, it's a bit deeper and just sounds off. So I worry and go grab some lights and a gun, hop on my four-wheeler, and head up there, thinking something is wrong. By this time, it is completely dark. I start at the old barn and listen, but nothing happens. I know the sound came from that hollow, but there's no way. Maybe it tried to hide to have its calf, so I pushed on. 
Nothing but water is running. Everything went quiet, frogs and crickets. But nothing. So I go to the actual barn and find the cows all accounted for eating hay. I said another, so I will tell you the first thing that really startled me. I had been living in this house for a couple months and was outside doing some work, and it was dark, so I went inside after putting up my GSD, he was only a few months old, and I didn't want coyotes to get him, and I hear whistling, not like a bird, it's dark, and like I said, it wasn't bird-like. Kind of like a person? I don't know how to explain it. I found myself wandering towards the noise. I get probably halfway from the house to the edge of the fence, and it stops. 30 yards, maybe. And it turns into growling. Chills run up my spine. I go for my pistol, but I don't have it on me. Next, I hear brush breaking and thuds from stepping, and I see some movement through the trees with my light, it was a green spotlight, so I'm not 100% on the color, I want to say gray though, and it tore through the brush and was gone. I ran inside, got a gun, and pursued what little I could without getting too far in the thick brush and potentially exposing myself to whatever it was. What whistles and growls? What can sound like a cow? I live in the California foothills. My parents and I moved into this house from the city in late 2017, after it had been sitting empty for over a year. The day we moved in, my mother and I arrived first to clean while my father and brother drove the moving truck. Right off the bat, I was uneasy, but I tried to write it off. The property felt heavy, which is the only way I can describe it. Some people on here describe the feeling of being watched inside their homes, but I had that feeling any time I stepped outside. We were going to sweep and mop the floors and dust the baseboards and window sills when I started noticing this white granular powder all along the baseboards. And the window sills. And the doorways. I immediately told my mother, who told me not to worry about it and to sweep it up. By the time I had swept up every room and cleaned off the window sills, I was certain it was salt. And a lot of it. But fine, whatever. The people who lived here before were superstitious. Okay, I can live with that. We unpacked the truck over the next week. I was setting up my room when the next bizarre event started happening. Knocking on the windows there were always quick raps that sounded like someone knocking with their knuckles. It would happen so often on all the windows in the house, but when you would turn, no one would be there. You'd go outside, no one would be around the house. This only escalated. My brother and I would walk the dogs around the property. They were older, small dogs who were always good-natured and calm, except for when they were outside at this new house. They would growl, puff out, and get extremely agitated. They hated being outside. Then we started finding the animal carcasses. They were always small creatures, rats, toads, bats, but the biggest we ever found was a raccoon. The animals had been gutted. A single deliberate line down their torso, starting at their chest and ending near their rear. No internal organs are left. They looked practically mummified, like something had sucked the fluid, blood, and organs right out of them. It was one of the most bizarre and brutal things I had ever seen. My brother would stay up late in his room on his computer every night. He liked to play with his friends until the early morning hours. He does not spook easy, but on more than one occasion I would wake up to him shaking me awake, terrified, and saying something massive on two legs was walking around outside his bedroom window, which he would have opened at night. He said it would walk right up to his bedroom window and stop, and when he would look towards the sound, he could hear it scrambling away. I never saw it with my own eyes, and neither did he, but the motion lights outside would be activated every single time, leading to the woods near the back of our property. I know what you're probably thinking, all of this up to this point can be explained rationally, a crazy person living in the woods, some neighbor messing with us for whatever reason. Well, that was what I told myself too, so I could sleep a little easier at night. Then the banging started. It was so loud, and it would sound like it was coming from everywhere at once. The walls would literally vibrate, with picture frames rattling right off the walls. It was like something massive, stronger than any crazy person, was pounding on the exterior walls of the house, always late at night, and always in more places than just one. I could never pinpoint the source directly. My brother and I would stumble out of our bedrooms, petrified, and my mom would lead us to a room, where we would stay after that. My dad would walk the perimeter of our property with his gun, but he never found anything. No footprints, no people, nothing. This happened for probably six months. And every time a major event would happen, my dad would walk the perimeters with his rifle. And come back with nothing. We felt like we were going insane. Then suddenly, it just stopped. The mutilated animals stopped appearing. I stopped feeling like I was being watched any time I went outside. My dog stopped being so on edge any time I took them out, and the property itself seemed to get lighter, like it finally took a deep breath after holding it for so long. 
I genuinely have no explanation or even a clue as to what that creature, being, or entity even was. I'm just glad it seems to have moved on. I lived in a mobile home in a park called Indian Hills when I was a teenager, and there were rumors that it used to be an Indian burial, and the graves were all moved at some point. Anyway, I experienced many super creepy and unexplained things in that house, but there were two that were incredibly similar to the ones you touched on. 1. I bought a Game Boy, Advance? For my birthday one year ago, I saved up all my money and was so excited for it, and within a week or two of having it, it completely vanished from the shelf that I left it on. We searched the whole house multiple times, even weeks apart, without any signs of it. It was either one or two years later when, out of the blue, one day my sister found it magically back on the same bookshelf I left it on. I know my sister didn't hide it from me because she was just as excited about it as I was and bought games for it too, and we were homeschooled and always together, so she couldn't play it either. 2. My mom was in a room at one end of our mobile home, and my sister and I stayed in the room at the opposite end. Our mom would come into our room in the middle of the night and yell at us for being too loud when we were either being quiet or completely silent. She didn't believe that we weren't making noise until she came in our room one night to yell at us, only to remember that we were sleeping over at a friend's house. She also had or as bad insomnia and had to take sleeping pills to get rest, and after that event, she swore she heard ghost children in her closet. We thankfully never saw any shadows or ghosts, but we had neighbors who swore they did regularly. We've lived in this house for about three to four years, with little to nothing happening. Me and my younger brothers have always joked that there was something weird about the house, but now things are getting weird. It started with little things, like things getting moved. Then things got knocked off and the floor creaked. The house was built in 1933, so we didn't think anything of the floor creaking. The other day, we were all here, except for my dad, who called randomly, asking if we were all okay. My mom replied, yes, we're all okay we're all home. Then he said, okay, I just got a weird feeling, which is very uncommon for my dad to get. A few minutes later, I'm with my mom in her room talking about our day, and my younger brothers run in with weapons. Me and my mom were both really shocked and asked what was happening. They told us that they heard a man say hey in the hallway. One of them was in the hallway and the other in their room, and they both heard it. They said it sounded exactly like our dad, who was about 40 minutes away. We all freaked out and started looking around to find nothing. That night, I had the feeling that someone was in my room watching me, and then around 3 a.m. I heard something walking around my room. I panicked and ran to my brother's room. He checked all over the house again and found nothing. So one night my wife, son, and I went to stay over at my wife's parents' house. It had gotten dark, and my son, about two at the time, got sleepy, so I decided to put him to bed. Let me try to explain the room to you, relevant for later. The door opens on the right side of the room, Immediately to your left is the light switch, and the queen-size bed is just beside that. It's a small room, just big enough for the bed and enough room to walk around the bed. The wall in front of the bed has a window. To the left of the bed is a closet with those weird accordion doors. I'm lying in bed with the lights out with my son, who is laying his head on my arm. He finally falls asleep, and I just lie there for a few minutes to make sure he is completely out. Then, out of nowhere, I get this horrible feeling. Goosebumps and hair standing up on my neck and arms. It was such an evil feeling. Have you ever had goosebumps up your scalp where it feels like your scalp is shrinking? I did that night, so bad, in fact, it literally felt like someone had a hand on my head, squeezing it. I was genuinely scared. Not so much for me, but for my son. Somehow, I knew deep down that if I turned away from my son, something bad would happen to him. I thought if I could turn on the light, I could grab my son and leave the room. So where I was on the bed, I could just barely touch the plastic bezel thing on the light switch. I was afraid to move because I knew if I did whatever this thing was, it would get my son. His head was on my arm this whole time. So I finally chanced on it. I jerked my arm away from my son and turned on the light. It honestly took a split second. When I turned back to grab him, he was at the bottom of the mattress, like something had pulled him from the top to the bottom in a split freaking second. And I know he didn't crawl down there because he was still fast asleep. So I grabbed him up, and we left the room and slept in the front room that night. Something evil wanted my child, that is truly terrifying. This specific event started when I moved to Fort Walton Beach, Florida, about six years ago. During the first couple of months after moving into my small house, me and my wife started noticing some pretty typical yet frightening events. I would say that I'm incredibly sensitive to paranormal events, and my wife hates that about me. When I met her, she was very skeptical and did not believe in anything paranormal. Where to begin? 
So I guess the real first event that happened in the house was while I was at work. I came home to my wife freaking out, she kept saying someone was walking in the attic. I assured her that nobody could possibly walk up there. It was a one-story house, and the attic was barely tall enough to crouch in. I convinced her to blow it off, telling her it was probably an old house making noises, typical stuff. This went on for two or three months until she was convinced someone was up there. She didn't want to stay home alone anymore, so I bought her a dog. About a week after our new puppy adoption, I went into the kitchen for something. Every single cupboard was open, the fridge, the doors, all of it. I immediately knew something was wrong, nothing was missing, everything was just open. So we did what any rational person would do, I layered the floor with flour. We woke up the next day, and we found the flour had been moved as though someone had drugged something through it, but no footprints could be seen. This is the point where we realized we might have something interesting happening here. After dealing with this for a couple more months, the scariest thing that has ever happened to me occurred. I'm having the worst anxiety talking about this part, my eyes are watering and I'm choking up. I have only ever told two people this, my wife and her mother. Hold on, my dog started barking, and my four-year-old daughter walked in, telling me she heard a bang and people were talking in her room. It's 1.30 AM, and I'm officially tripping balls. Continuing after laying her back down. Okay, so one night we go to bed, around a normal hour, and our dog sleeps with us every night. I wake up around 2.30 to 3 AM because I hear this deep growling noise. It's my dog. He's lying at the foot of my bed. I notice my bedroom door wide open, and as soon as I lay eyes on it, I gasp for air. My wife wakes up freaking out, thinking I'm dying. My dog sees this thing take off and chases it into the bathroom, no windows, no escape. I run into the bathroom as he's barking, and there is nothing there. Now I'm going to try and describe what we saw to the best of my ability. I honestly would have blown this off as a night terror had my dog not so violently woke me up and chased something into the bathroom. Okay. So as I sat up in bed while my dog was growling, I saw something peeking around the corner of my door frame. It was only about 4 feet tall, and it had its 3 fingers wrapped around the frame of the door, peeking its head in and staring at me while I slept. The only way I can describe it is that it had 2 small horns and was all black in color. It had 3 very long fingers with very sharp nails on the door frame. The only facial features I could see were its eyes. Glowing white locked in my eyes. That's when my dog jumped and chased this thing. I've looked everywhere online for answers as to what this is, every demonology book I could find, etc. Nothing. It still makes me have anxiety to this day thinking about it. For the past 3 or 4 months, there's been something in my house that cries at night. It's not my kids or my cats. It's something else. These disturbances typically happen between 10 pm and 2 am all of the children are asleep because they have a 9 pm bedtime. Suddenly we will hear the sound of a child crying, and I mean loudly crying, not just whimpers but big sobbing cries. One of us will immediately jump up to go check on the kids, as all of my children have had night terrors and typical childhood nightmares at some point. But none of them are ever awake. They're all fully asleep and completely peaceful. This will repeat a few more times until we go to bed. It doesn't happen every single night, maybe only once or twice a week, but it's very disturbing when it does. My 13-year-old has also heard the phantom crying, as she was up late with my husband and me one night on the weekend. Also, my children do not have TVs in their rooms, and their tablets and switches are always off, so it's not a sound coming from anything like that. They're not crying in their sleep either. I do have two Siamese cats who make noises that sound exactly like human voices, but they are always in the living room with us at night or sleeping in front of the heater in our kitchen, and I have been able to confirm it's not them. As well as the crying at night, we often hear the sound of doors opening and closing, most often the door to my daughter's bedroom. It makes a specific sound because the door sticks a little, and you have to put some force into opening or closing it. We always go check on the children after we hear this, and all of them are always asleep. These things are not just heard by me but by my husband too, so I know I'm not going crazy. The only thing even remotely like this that has ever happened to me was when my current 5-year-old was around 2, about 3 years ago and in the same house, and we both heard the sudden and extremely loud sound of what I can only describe as something or someone pretending to cry like a baby. I know that sounds weird, but it's the only way I can describe it. Imagine a grown adult, almost mockingly, pretending to cry like a newborn, that's what it sounded like. It was so loud and frightening that my daughter instantly started screaming in fear, and I packed us into the car and left the house toot sweet. We spent the rest of the day at my sister's, and I refused to be alone in the house without my husband for the next couple of days. So, what could this be? A demon? A ghost? 
I don't really believe in the idea of dead people just hanging around your house for eternity. A mimic? What could this thing want? So my boyfriend and I have lived in this house for two years, and a little while after I started hearing my boyfriend in the house, way after he should have left for work. One day I got up and checked, and my boyfriend wasn't there, so I went back to bed only to hear more of it. This isn't my first rodeo, as I have always been around the paranormal, but it caught me a little off guard, to be honest. I have never gotten a bad vibe or feeling around this particular spirit, and it's never really been violent other than knocking a candle off the table once. A couple months ago, I was cooking fish for dinner, and it smelled awful. We had just bought it, and my boyfriend told me that's how they usually smell. He went to lay down because he got a bad headache, and 30 minutes later I heard him shuffling out of the bedroom and asking what the hell that smell was. I turned around to tell him it was the fish, but there wasn't anyone there. The voice came from right behind me. I told my boyfriend, and he said I was crazy, and then a little empty box was pushed off the counter right in front of him. He hasn't questioned me about it since, but I just heard it whistle for my dog the same way my boyfriend does from the bedroom. There is something demonic in my house. We live in a nice area, the house isn't too old, and we are in Michigan. When we first moved in, there was absolutely no reason for us to believe it was haunted. About two months went by, and we started to experience things that could be written off as natural. Eventually, things escalated, and boy did they escalate quickly. The first big encounter we experienced was our bedroom door slamming shut while we were watching a movie downstairs, and it was loud enough to rattle the paintings on the living room wall, so of course we ran up to check what happened. When we opened the door, the bedding was off our bed when it originally was tidy, and the curtain pole had fallen off the window. We got spooked by this, and this would happen regularly. It was never a different room, it was always the main bedroom. Doors being slammed during the day and at night, things being in places we didn't leave them, pillows on the floor, etc. Before I mention this next part, I just want to ensure you know my wife has never experienced sleep paralysis in her entire life, until one night in April, when she woke up and saw a tall figure that resembled a human but wasn't. The figure didn't move, she described it as just standing still and watching in the corner of the room. This freaked her out enough that she woke me up, and we both had to sit and watch a movie till she could feel comfortable enough to fall asleep. Things didn't stop there, they got more aggressive. We haven't been physically harmed yet, but things would be thrown. Paintings dropped off walls, pillows thrown across the room again, bottles of deodorant being slammed off walls, it is to the point where I'm mentally drained from coming home from work and knowing there is a huge mess to clean up. What can we do? What is this thing that is doing all of this? And why? Our house isn't that old. I'd say the 60s or 70s. We live in a nice area, why would it be haunted? We are so mentally drained, and we can't afford to move. So I'm 21 years old and have been living in the same house for around 20 years of my life. I moved when I was one from a house that my mom said made her feel sick. She said that after I was born, she heard weird noises in the old house and footsteps on Halloween weekend, I was born in mid-October. Well, anyway, fast forward all these years. I live in an apartment with my parents and brother. I always have this weird feeling that something is standing in the corner of my kitchen by the doors. I sleep in the living room, so I have a straight view into the kitchen, since it's a small apartment. Some nights I have trouble sleeping because I feel like something is watching me. The same thing occurs in my room, I feel as if something is standing behind me. Now I thought I might be paranoid, but here is where it gets weird. I had two really bad dreams over the past two years. It was an invisible force attacking me pinning me to the floor or lifting me in the air. I always tried to scream for help, breathe, or move, but I never could. The freaky thing is, in my dream, the attack occurred in the same place in my house where I feel something. Recently, I noticed the sound of furniture moving, maybe from other apartments, and the flickering of my living room light. At times, my TV turns off and on again, but I thought it was just a surge. I told my parents and brother, but they don't believe me. I guess I'm the only one. And no, I have never tried playing with ghosts and demons, talking to them, or summoning them. When I was 4 years old, my family moved from Philadelphia to a small suburb 15 minutes away. The crime in the city had become unbearable, and with three small kids, myself and my two sisters, who were 7 and 11 at the time, my dad decided it was time for a change. He found a cheap four-bedroom house and moved us in. I got the smallest room, which was obviously a child's room prior to us moving in the shirt light switch was a dead giveaway. Anyway, about a week in, my parents woke up in the middle of the night to check on us and realized I wasn't in bed. They woke my sisters up and started frantically checking everywhere for me. After searching the entire upstairs of the house, they came down the steps that put you in the dining room. 
In the dining room, there was a flimsy wooden door leading to the partially finished basement with an unpractically high latch. That I could not reach at four years old and was always locked. Except it was wide open with no lights on. The light switch was upstairs, but the light itself had a string you had to pull to turn it on or off that was in the basement. As they made their way down the steps in the pitch black, they could hear me asking questions like, what's your name? How long have you lived here? How old are you? My dad ran over, pulled the string, turned the lights on, grabbed me from the corner I was standing in with my eyes closed, and shook me. When I woke up, I kept asking where the boy I was just talking to went. I'm 31. I have never slept or walked before that and I never have since. Between then and the time I moved out around 20, not only numerous unexplainable things happened to me, but family, multiple family members, and even friends sleeping over or visiting. For two years, I lived in a house with my husband, now ex, and our three daughters. This house had belonged to his grandma, who had lived there for over 50 years and raised her three sons there. The house is a huge ranch-style home with a basement. Four bedrooms, three bathrooms, two different living rooms, a fireplace, and an old grand piano it was very outdated when we moved in, with a lot of grandma stuff still there. Mostly trinkets, books, etc., and the flooring, paint, and wallpaper haven't been updated since the 1970s. When grandma was alive, she loved visitors and would talk passionately about her home, telling you how hard she worked to keep the house after her husband left and saying specifically, I never want to leave this house, meaning she never wanted to go to a retirement home and she never did as she died there after complications of a stroke stemming from what turned out to be unnecessary heart surgery. My ex decided to buy the house, and so we moved in. I had never had paranormal experiences before, and I just wanted to share what we experienced, as I still don't know what to make of it as I didn't really believe in ghosts before this. The first time was after we put the kids to bed and were folding laundry together. We both very clearly heard footsteps, sounded like the footsteps of a child or toddler, in the opposing room, and we looked at each other, thinking it was one of the kids out of bed. He yelled, go back to sleep. With no response, we walked in, and no one was there. The kids are asleep in bed. It was definitely a bit unnerving and confusing. So this all began when my friend, M, moved into a new house south of town. The house was built sometime in the early 1900s and has a very strange layout, especially the basement. M moved there during the summer, so all of our friends were free to hang out in the new house. It was a normal boys' night with us just screwing around and playing stupid games. At one point, around 2 in the morning, a few of us decided to play ghost in the graveyard in the extremely creepy basement. The others would not, because they were saying they felt very uneasy and got negative energy from the basement. So the game commenced with the ones who were willing to play. I was seeking it first. While I was searching, I walked into a room, and I instantly had a sick feeling in my gut, but I continued to walk deeper in. I bumped into a table and bruised my hip, so I didn't want to continue any further, in fear of hurting myself in the scary darkness again. As I proceeded to turn around, I felt someone grab my calf and pull my leg back towards the back of the room. I jumped, whipped out my phone, turned my flashlight on, and shone it in the back of the room. No one was in sight. I then heard a knock, and I called one of the boys upstairs to turn on the lights, the switch at the top of the stairs can control all lights downstairs, and I then called out to everyone that they had to come out. I told them what happened, and all of them said they felt strange things as well. My friend, C, said that he felt someone touch his back as if they were trying to get his attention. M said he was hearing someone whisper to him, but he didn't recognize the voice. The two others that were down there, T and W, were hiding in a closet together, and they both heard a third person breathing in the closet. We're all very spooked at this point, so run upstairs ASAP. We told the others what had happened, and then they told us something that spooked us even more. My friend M has three big dogs that have no fear of anything, or so we thought. While we were playing our game, the dogs were growling at the basement door, and when there was a knock heard from upstairs, the dogs started to cry and retreat into the living room. After experiencing this, we decided it'd be best to spend the rest of the night upstairs and away from the basement door. Fast forward to the next night. I'm home alone, sitting in the living room with my dog, Abby. Abby and I were sitting on the floor in front of the TV watching whatever, and when I started telling my girlfriend about what happened, Abby got up into her fighting stance, tried to imagine the cutest and beefiest tricolor Aussie, and got low, low, low to the ground. She begins to growl in the kitchen. Then, all of a sudden, we both hear a thud. Abby begins to cry and runs behind me. I get up and walk into the kitchen to see nothing. Ever since then, I have not felt alone in my house when it's only me and my dog. It will sometimes feel very heavy, 
it will get cold fast randomly, and there's an occasional smell in the living room super late at night that was never there before. Sometimes when I'm in my room, I'll hear creaks in the hallway, like someone's walking through it, or things from the room next to me that have nothing in them. But there's always that occasional dull thud in the middle of the night, and it's almost always followed up by the sound of Abby's pattering and whimpers coming closer to my door. But I have to admit, I'm not entirely sure it's Abby all the time, mainly because I know she's not as heavy as the pattering sounds make it seem sometimes, and she sure as hell does not have the same deep breathing I hear from outside my door. It happened to me and a couple friends in 2011, and I've never really told anyone other than my significant other. We were 19 and in a ghost hunting phase, had been to some reportedly haunted sites, and didn't have any experiences to speak of. We had heard of a small abandoned village or hamlet a short way out of the city that we were told was very creepy and unsettling. Side note, my grandma, it turns out, was actually born there of all places, it was a very small town with maybe 50 to 100 people that was abandoned, reportedly overnight in the 50s. We decided to go there after dark one evening. All that remains is the collapsed general store, one house, and a perfectly preserved Ukrainian Orthodox church. The small house had the windows and doors removed. We explored inside, there was still wallpaper in the bedrooms and living room and some old kitchen items in the kitchen. It was creepy, but mainly because it was dark in the middle of nowhere. We took some videos of the inside and left shortly after. When we got home, we watched the videos and didn't see anything, but we picked up something that sounded like a girl saying please, no. It wasn't clear, so I didn't really think it was anything. Something compelled us to go back a few weeks later, and this is where shit got real. I decided to print off some questions in Latin because I saw a video saying that an inhuman spirit would respond to Latin. It was mostly to creep out another friend that tagged along this time, I was a jackass. The second we drove up to the house, the feeling was different this time, I felt dread. The three of us, our one friend refused to get out of the car, decided to go back in the house and discovered it had a dirt cellar this time, so we went down. It was your average dirt basement, there was absolutely nothing in there except a few old, broken jars. We went back upstairs, and one friend went back to the car. I stood out on the porch, leaning into the window, while my other friend stood on the grass, maybe 10 feet behind me. This is when I decided to start asking the questions in Latin while recording. I asked things like, is there anything here? Who slash what are you? And lastly show yourself. At this point, there was a sound from inside the house. I said it again, and before I could even finish, boom, boom. It sounded like something coming up from the basement, and fast. I screamed loudly, as did the friend who was behind me. We ran to my car, and my one friend was already in the driver's seat. We barely got into the car before she was peeling down the dirt road. I cried a little bit, and I don't think there was a word spoken by anyone. There was no way there was an animal or person inside the house, it was tiny, and there was nowhere for an animal or person to hide. Plus, we had just been through the entire house ourselves. There was nothing on the video other than me screaming and telling my friend to go when I got in the car. I have no clue what happened that night, but it scared me to my core, although it made me more curious. I've been to other allegedly haunted places since, but I have never had another experience or encounter. I haven't been back there since and don't intend to return. My husband, our one-year-old, and I live in a rental and have been here for three years now. When we first moved in, there was a random doorbell that would go off, there isn't a doorbell here that we can see. We thought that there was probably a battery-powered doorbell stored in the attic that was probably dying or malfunctioning. That eventually stopped, and we forgot about it for the most part. My husband also used to see what he called shadow people, hear footsteps, and have horrible sleep paralysis dreams. I always chalked it up to his mind playing tricks on him or trying to scare me. It's been a few years since any of that has happened, though, and for the year that our daughters lived with us, zero spooky things happened until last night. My husband works the night shift, so it's just me and the baby most nights. Well, last night my daughter woke up around midnight, so I got her and brought her to my bed. She is back asleep, and I am wide awake scrolling through Hulu. As I'm searching for a show to watch, I kid you, not the foot of my bed, frame, and all lifts like half a foot off the ground and slams back down. My daughter is still asleep, but I'm frozen in fear. My first thought was, there is someone under my bed, but I quickly realized that I couldn't even fit under our bed, so that is far-fetched but not any better. I quickly scoop my daughter up football style, stand on my bed, jump off the bed as far as possible, and run out of the room. I grab our gun, call my husband, shaking and sobbing, to please come home, then call my mom to come pick us up, one vehicle family. At that point, our kitchen lights start to dim until they are completely off, which was the last straw. 
I took my daughter and went to the front yard in only a t-shirt and pants until my husband got home, like 10 minutes. He did a sweep of the house, and nothing seemed out of place, which weirdly only made me more scared. I would rather a stranger be under my bed than some invisible force, but I still went to my mom's. I finally fell asleep around 330, and my husband picked us up at 5 a.m. when he got off work. I'm afraid to sleep here, so I've been awake ever since. I don't know how I'm going to be here alone at night anymore. I'm trying to debunk what happened and find an explanation, but I can't. My house used to be a cemetery. The whole block I live in used to be a cemetery in the 1920s. There was a big storm, and the remains of the people buried in the cemetery were washed out, and someone bought the land to build houses on it. Thus, my block was born. There are two bedrooms in my house. My sister and I share one, and my parents have the other, with us right in front of mine. One morning during breakfast, my mom told me that she could not sleep at all the night before. That wasn't something out of the ordinary, as she suffers from insomnia and often has to take sleeping pills. Then she said that she had to talk to me privately, without my little sister in the room. I thought I was in some sort of trouble, but that wasn't the case at all. When my sister left the kitchen to shower, my mom told me what really happened the night before. She said that she was lying in bed, playing games on her tablet, when, from the corner of her eye, she saw someone peek into her room from the hallway. She thought it was one of us, me or my sister, walking to the bathroom, so she didn't think anything of it. But then she saw someone peek around her door again, and this time she looked up and, since she thought it was one of us, was prepared to tell us to go back to bed. However, when she got up and walked to her door, she found there was nobody there. She said that she came into our room and was confused when both my sister and I were sound asleep in our beds. She decided to dismiss it and just go back to bed. A little while later, she saw a person peeking into her room again, but this time, they walked into her room. It was a woman who looked like she was wearing a beige-colored nightgown or dress that seemed to float around her bed, to her side, and just stared at my mom. My mom said that she wanted to scream, get up, and run, but she couldn't. She just stayed there, frozen in place, and was forced to look at this woman in front of her. My mom said that the woman was wearing a purple headband that was glowing in the dark. My mom took particular notice of this because it was the only colored thing about the figure. Then the woman floated out and never came back in. My mom stayed in bed until the sun came up because she was too afraid to do anything else. She urged me not to tell this to my little sister, and I complied. I knew my sister couldn't handle something like that, everything scares her. When I was younger, I spent the day helping a neighbor rake leaves on his property. He was friendly with my family, so he walked me home to say hi to my parents. We walked into the house and heard my mom upstairs talking, it sounded like she was on the phone, and walking around. I called for my dad but got no answer. My neighbor says, well, it sounds like your mom is on the phone, I'll catch them another time. We say goodbye, and he leaves. I go upstairs to see my mom, but I can't seem to find her or hear her anymore. I searched the house, and it's empty. I'm thinking, did she leave the house while I was saying goodbye to the neighbor somehow? I call my dad's cell, my mom didn't have one, and he picks right up. I ask him where he is and if he knows where mom went. We're at the store, we've been running errands for a couple of hours. Instant goosebumps. My neighbor and I both heard footsteps upstairs and a woman's voice. I had no idea who or what it was, but we both heard it. I waited outside until my parents got home. I'm a bit of a skeptic, I naturally think of anything other than something supernatural when I see, hear, or feel something, but I still like to believe these things may exist. Now, I live in a three-story house, and people have always told me that my house is haunted, from my mom saying that she'd be in the basement and would hear footsteps upstairs to one of my cousins sleeping in that same basement and swearing that the tightly closed door of the room would swing open by itself. I even experienced something weird when I was younger. I was on the top floor, where my room is now with about four of my cousins, and we heard footsteps running up the stairs that were right by where we were. We figured it was our younger cousins who had tried coming up a couple times before, so I went out to tell them to go back down again. Lo and behold, there was nobody there at that time. Needless to say, we ran down those stairs like mad and never went back up. Jump ahead to a month or two ago, and in the main story, I'm still against the idea that my house is anything in it. The people stating that my house is haunted in this story are my cousin, M., and my girlfriend, D, they keep bringing up reasons why they think it's haunted, and I keep bashing away their reasoning with things that could explain what could have caused those reasons, such as reflections when seeing shadows and whatnot. BTW, this conversation was preceded by other creepy or weird things we were talking about, not related to my house, so the night already had a spooky atmosphere for us.
We were also in the kitchen on the middle floor of the house, and my parents were out of town, so it was just us there. Anyway, as we're talking about my house, we all of a sudden hear a loud crash from the basement, like something had fallen. Now, D was down there maybe 10 or 15 minutes or so before and didn't notice anything odd. So, obviously spooked at this point, we decide we need to go downstairs. I tell D and M's brother to stay there since D is pregnant, and I'm not trying to put her in any sort of danger. She says fuck that and follows us downstairs. So we're all down there and looking around, M and I carrying knives just in case, and we find nothing out of place. We even go outside and check the perimeter of the house, and still nothing. So we have no idea what's going on, but we notice one thing is out of place. When you go into my house through the basement and down the stairs from the middle floor, there's a door between that little area and the rest of the basement floor. Now D swore that door was closed when she came up earlier, because my blind dog is there, so we don't want him wandering and walking into something and getting hurt. When we went down, it had a crack. Now I tried to rationalize the whole thing as being the wind opening the door or something but the only window open in the house was the one in my room up in the attic. M immediately said that the wind couldn't have traveled all that distance and opened a door that, when it's shut, is shut tight. I honestly couldn't deduce anything past that, so I have no idea what the hell happened. I even admit that even though the only thing off was the door, that noise we heard was so loud and strong that it sounded nothing like a door slamming? Open. It sounded like something heavy fell and crashed on the floor, but as I said, everything was fine. This happened a few years ago at our old house. I was on the kitchen side of the bar watching over dinner, my husband and daughter were on the living room side, we're all facing each other and talking. The ball of light is outlined in red, although it was white, I just had a red marker and wanted to emphasize it. This ball of white light, maybe 5 inches wide, floats in between us about 4 to 5 feet off the floor. It came from my right, it could have come through the window or the wall or just appeared out of thin air. I really don't know since none of us were looking in that direction before we saw it. It just hovers there, and we watch it for a few seconds in silence, then the kitchen faucet behind me turns on full blast, so we all take our eyes off the ball of light and look to the sink. When we looked back, the light was gone. My husband and daughter didn't have to turn their heads to look at the sink like I did, they just sort of diverted their eyes a bit, and they didn't see it move away out of the corner of their eyes or anything. Maybe it moved quickly or just vanished, I don't know. Could it have been ball lightning? There were no storms that day, actually, there was not a cloud in the sky. It was a beautiful and sunny day. We didn't feel any static or electrical energy when it was near us. Why would lightning bother the faucet that was over 8 feet away and not have any impact on my laptop or the two cell phones, which were all very close to it on the counter? We installed this faucet, so we were familiar with it. It was pretty cheap and mostly made of plastic, and there was very little metal in it. All of our plumbing was PEX, with the only metal being maybe some fittings here and there. However, there was a metal refrigerator and metal stove nearby, as well as some small appliances that were plugged in, nothing seemed affected at all. It would be pretty cool if we actually saw ball lightning because it's so rare. But the fact that it is so rare is what makes me question it. <laughs>